This is a huge incentive, just as it stands on the statute book, because there's no time frame which is provided. Anyway, these are now, now, now having said, submitted this, I want to just give you two citations, just uh, if you, if I may, I, they are on record, I'll give you the paragraphs as well. Now, what your lordships have held is that one has to examine ultimately the effect of the law. So, when you're, when you're looking at the... You don't look at the object of the law, but... Yeah, exactly. To Actually, for Section 3, the Parliament has divided it into three time frames. Anybody who is born in India after 1950, after 26 January 1950, but before 1 July 1987, you become a citizen, citizen by birth irrespective of parental status. Whether parents are citizens. That's all. That's all, well, John. I, I, I understand. Then between 87 and 2003, any one parent, if he is a citizen, the child becomes a citizen if you are born in India. After 2003, it is more stringent. Either both your parents have to be a citizen or one person is a citizen, but the other should not be an illegal migrant. So they have tightened it up. Before, 19, before 1987, it was nothing. I mean, irrespective no, of... No, but I, well, look, that's, that's probably on a textual, probably on first blush, probably on first blush, your lordships may come to that conclusion. But in our respectful submission, because I don't want to get into that, there's a whole thicket of rules, etc., which they're framed. And there's a process and a protocol being followed we, for the purpose of NRC. That's all for our determination. It, I don't believe it does, because according to us, it's implicit. That where you have a situation where you have two, where you have illegal uh, migrants, they are to be prosecuted. There are a whole range of options which are available to the government as to what they can do if there is a breach and violation of the Passports Act, if people have entered, overstayed, etc., etc., come in without appropriate documents. The whole range of responses which they may have, they may require you to be in a particular area. We are not getting into that. So therefore, in our, therefore, I just responded very broadly. Our understanding is there is no automatic uh, uh, citizenship which is allowed in so far as children of illegal migrants are concerned. But that's a position. I don't want to go any uh, further than that. Now, Manoj, I want to just summarize. Sorry, I want to just... There is, there is some separate repetition, I understand, etc. on that point. Anyway, in our respectful submission, this is specific to a citizen of India. And therefore, there are two elements to this. One is, of course, the strict scrutiny test, because our, our, our submission is going to be that this is really having an impact on the integrity of India. It's having an impact on the sovereignty of India, this decision, which is the impugned provision. And in as much as it so does impact, a strict scrutiny would ought, would, uh, 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 ought to be applied while examining the validity of the law. Please see the expression, has been ordinarily resident in Assam since the dates of their entry into Assam. And you will find this also in the next subsection. This, in our respectful submission, the effect and the impact of this particular provision is that people will continue to remain in Assam, one. And number two, it serves as a beacon to attract people to come to Assam and make whatever claim, false claim, etc., etc. What you find is, it's not just that on a particular day there is some determination. By holding that the person should ordinarily be resident in Assam since the date of entry, you are creating a situation where, because as you will find that there is no time limit which is prescribed for any of these determinations under subsection 2, subsection 3, etc. There is no time, outer time limit at all which is prescribed. It can be done today. There is no problem. I mean, if this particular uh, 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 section is valid, you can make an assertion today and that's it. So, this is another feature in subsection 2 which you will notice. So, three features. First, it's blanket and there is no conditionality which is to be met. There is no process provided for, for the purposes of determination. And third, there is a very strong encouragement to people to remain ordinarily, ordinarily resident in Assam since the time that you enter and to make a claim. Now, please see subsection 3. Our understanding of the submission is this. This is how it works. Number one, all determinations, those four points which I mentioned, whether you are a person of Indian origin, came to Assam during these periods, have since been ordinarily really resident and have been detected to be a foreigner. Everything is to be done by the tribunal alone. That's the first point I want to make. That's the determination. The registering authority has to require an opinion of the tribunal. That's one. Second feature I want to point out is, for the purposes of registering, the detection exercise has to be first complete. You cannot seek registration without detection to be a foreigner or to be declared as a foreigner. Third, there is no time on our understanding prescribed for this exercise at all within which it is to be completed. 
So what you have is, and there is no time period prescribed for this. There is no time period at all which is prescribed for this particular exercise to be carried out. So no time period as far as 3 is concerned. No time period in so far as 4 is concerned. Sorry, so, um, four, 4 does not postulate registration. It does. 4, 4. Yeah, a person registered. Right, right. Under subsection 3. Correct. So you will. So first, you will have to have a detection. Once detection, registration under the uh, that section. Then he applies for it. Then he applies for registry, and then four says you will have the same rights and obligation. No, but uh, uh, but shall not be entitled to have included in the electoral road uh, for a period of ten years. Correct. So for ten years, they were knocked off the electoral rolls, basically. Ah, but from what date is the question? I ask myself. It's from the date of detection. From Just the date of detection. Seems to be like that. Yes. Shall person register, I'll read it again. A person registered under subsection 3 shall have as from the date on which he has been detected to be a foreigner and till the expiry a period of 10 years from that date. So detection? From the date of detected. Right. Correct. So no period prescribed for within what, what period the detection exercise has to be completed at all. Then from that detection exercise 10 years. All rights except voting. And, ten, uh, and after 10 years, you will have a voting right. But this is completely open-ended, as your lordships have seen. It's an open-ended so exercise. It can go on indefinitely. It can be at any point of time. Yeah, it can, according to me, be done today as well. It can be done today as well. And people will continue to assert uh, today. Action. Just out of curiosity, I want to know, Sir. what is the position of the children born? So, I'll tell you my position. Oh, by the So, I'll, I'll just give you my position. Uh, but the legislature, where are they? Like, like putting the, uh, the cart before the horse. It's on the reversal side. No, I understand. So, so I, 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 I want to just respond by giving you what our position is. Though that might be itself the subject matter of a separate exercise which has to take place. So, as your lordships have seen that there is a notion of uh, uh, citizenship by birth. Correct? Our understanding is, and even in so far as the manner of registration is concerned, as far as NRC process is concerned, if you are born to illegal immigrants, according to us, it is implicit that you cannot be registered or placed on the registrar, uh, a register of citizens. That's my respectful submission. That's my understanding of the law. And this will apply across the country. So there is, so there is a certain text and there is a, a context also uh, in terms of you will find in section 3 of citizenship by birth. But my our submission or our position, I shouldn't say my submission because I don't want to get into that separate section. Like right see section 3 because… Oh, I understand. Yeah. So, so, section 3, so that is going to be a matter of interpretation and construction which will take place. And at an appropriate stage, the authorities at this point… He postulates that, you know, on or after any person, every person born in India will say sticks to clause C. Yeah. On after 2003 Amendment Act, yeah. both of his parents are citizens of India, yeah. or one of whose parents is a citizen of India and the other is not an illegal migrant at the time of the birth. Yeah. So, if one of the uh, parents is an illegal migrant at the time of the birth, then you don't get the benefit of citizenship by birth. Yeah. So, well, that will be a whole separate uh, thicket of point. But I, since the question is being put to me, I'm just indicating that the, from what we understand as far as on the ground, ground is concerned. Sorry. We are only seeing the impact. Possibly yes, the impact. The impact. Now, those who are who, who come in yeah. before uh, 1166, uh, uh, who determine that? To 71, see, the grievance appears to be practically, if you see, with the, the generation who would, would, would have stationed here thereafter. Yeah. See, if, if let us assume that they come in their uh, early teens, right. they must be in their 70s or, 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 or late 80s. Right. But you know what? What is the uh, the, the 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 fallout of it? What is what is the consequence of it? That's what we have to see now. No, of course. So the consequence, uh, short of so, there could be many many consequences. The government under, is fully empowered. Sorry. Interpreting section under section section three also will have to be given. So now I want to just summarize three or four impacts. So what what are the impacts of six A as we understand it? So I'll just summarize it. So one, according to us, illegal migrants in Assam who are required to be identified and processed under Section 3 of the Foreigners Act 46 are rewarded with citizenship. This is one element. This whole notion of ordinarily resident in Assam binds down the person to Assam and it impinges upon my all those other rights which I have already mentioned to the court. So this is in our respectful submission it nails the person down over there, it causes him and uh, to uh, remain over there, him or her. It was the sequitur of 
ordinarily resident is people will who have come are not even going to move elsewhere in the country that's what i intended to convey and the final point is that the very existence of section 6a continuing on the statute book operates even today as a beacon to persons to migrate illegally into assam and then perhaps game the system in whatever manner they want and make a claim for citizenship this is not there anywhere else in the in respect of any other other part of the country so it's open ended so even today if there is a if somebody is you know whatever may happen may not happen as to which where should i cross over the border from this is a huge incentive just as it stands on the statute book because there's no time frame which is provided anyway but these are now 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 having said submitted this i want to just give you two citations just uh, if you if i may I, they are on record i'll give you the paragraphs as well now what your lordships have held is that one has to examine ultimately the effect of the law so when you when you're looking at the you don't look at the object of the law but yeah, the exactly to say x o yeah absolutely but so that i have now mallard i'm on sex article 14 so i'll just make my points on article 14 so my first point is i am i endeavor to attack the classification itself so that's the first point so my respectful submission the classification is not based on any rational criteria and here i make two points assam is singled out here but there is a severe problem not just in assam but also in respect of other border states with respect to illegal migrants from bangladesh including inter alia west bengal meghalaya tripura etc i go further and submit on the basis of the materials which i have already read yesterday that there are others non border states also so two of them which were mentioned for example was maharashtra was mentioned rajasthan nct of delhi you lots may recall from those studies etc where this problem is there 